I'm Dr. Stacia Alexander, your host of Goals Don't Have Feelings, America's number one success therapist. Thank you guys again for tuning in for this wonderful holiday. Yes, it is my birthday. And I'm so glad to be celebrating it with some of my bestest friends. Tasha Branded Bandit will be on and Nisha Livingston, our cool, calm breeze, the balancer. Yep, we're going to have a good time tonight. We have the most specialist of guests coming on with us. So thank you for tuning in. If you haven't already, make sure you like and tag and comment on this commentary tonight on the post. And if you feel really bold, do a watch party. We'll hop in and out of those different watch parties and celebrate with you on May 7th for my birthday. In case this is your first time tuning in, I do this show because I highlight the emotionality of success. And why do I do that? Because not enough people are talking about what it takes out of us emotionally to actually set a goal, develop a plan, execute that plan and sustain that goal for long periods of time. So that's what we talk about on this show. And while we talk about it, we have a good time, laugh, current events, celebrations, bringing other people in so that we could kind of ease the tension when it comes to talking about um, mental health. And we're all doing this so that we can remove the stigma of mental health. So check out my website at StaciaAlexander.com. Go to my YouTube channel and subscribe or follow me on the social media platforms and you can see the prior episodes that we've done. We have an excellent time and tonight is no different. As well, I'm an author. I wrote a book with my husband of 27 years and our two adult children. It's called The Balancing Act Family Guide. You can locate that book on my website or you can get it on Amazon. If you want a signed copy, go to the family's website at alexandersbalancingact.com. So what's our topic for tonight? Yeah, we're talking with a sister with a voice. And Tasha had to kind of check me on some things because I got so, so excited when I realized that I would have the blessed opportunity to interview her. So Tasha, hey, Nisha, how y'all doing? Hello. 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 Happy birthday. Yay! <laughs> Happy birthday, dog! Yay! I remember when Taylor was little, every time she got ready to do this dance, she did this move every time she was about to break out and dance because she had learned it in ballet. So that's what I'm doing today, my dance. <laughs> Jazz hands. You are the big 5-0. Can, yeah. can you believe that? 50. I, I cannot believe, I, I cannot believe that. I, you know, I'm not 50 yet. Right. So, you know, I'm still, I'm still young. I'm a young chick. Uh-huh. Two months. Two months. Two months. <laughs> Two months. <laughs> But I cannot believe, I mean, I think back when we were in high school, I cannot believe that, yeah, we're 50 this year. I just yes. cannot. I know. Yep. You know, and I think about, I think about the, the kids, like younger kids, like little gals age, you know, because she called me an old woman. And I wonder <laughs> when they see us, you know how when we were that age, how we saw our parents in a certain light. So I'm wondering, I always wonder how they see me, see us, I guess. Well, now. she's like an old lady. She said that. <laughs> <laughs> well, you guys are wearing 50 very well. Uh, when I grow up, I would like to be like you ladies. But you, can... <laughs> but you guys are wearing it very well. And uh, this is the new 50. I'm, I'm loving it on both of you guys. So yeah. thank um, you. you. For, of the good work and um, 50 more, 50 more. I know. That's how I feel. Like, I, you know what? When you talk about aging, Tasha, one of the things that I do feel like, I don't feel like we're aging like our parents did. Like, I remember my mom being in her 40s, and I thought that that was so old, you know? Yeah. Like, I just don't see that anymore. Well, I, I think because each generation gets a little younger, you mm. know, the things that we're doing now, um, our parents were not doing at this age, you know, they felt like, you know, they were much too old. So I, I see that. And I think because it seems like every generation, they're having their kids even younger. You know, my mother was, I think, around 23, 24 when she had me. I mean, so now people are having their babies young and they're growing up, so to speak, with their children. And so I think that is what what does it. I mean, because I look at these TikTok videos and some of the, the kids have their parents. There is no way my mother <laughs> would have done that. She wouldn't have even known what the current dances were, songs or right. anything else. But it's right. like we almost, well, I don't because I don't listen to hip hop. 
you know, but a lot of the parents, they listen to the same music that their kids are listening to. I agree with you. I, uh -huh. think, so. I think so too. I think yeah. our lives are extending more, like, you know, like we travel more, yeah. we uh, get out more, we're not sitting down on the weekends. I mean, yeah. I don't, I remember when I turned 40 and we went to New York and my mother told me, she said, she said, there is no way I would have traveled and done things like you do by myself. She said, I just would have never done that, you know? Mm -hmm. And and that does seem so long ago. I went to New York for 40. That's 10 years like ago. Yes. Yeah, that's 10 years ago. I thought about that too, because um, We've done a lot in 10 years. I even what came up on my timeline, we had gone rock climbing, you know. It was like, yeah, who, who does that? You know, even well, you know, we were just reconnecting on Facebook, everyone, about I guess 10 years nine, 10 years ago. 10 years ago yeah. yeah. Yeah, or really 10, because see, I think I got on in 09. So really now about 11 years. 11 ago. years. Uh -huh. And I remember you were the very first friend on my Facebook. You were the very first <laughs> one. I see. And then you accepted it like that. That was before I had a laptop. And of course, I didn't have a smartphone. So uh, at the time, I was still at mom, living with mom. She was sick. And I was in there on the computer, you know. Uh -huh. So every night to get on Facebook, I would have to go and get on the computer. Oh, you know? yeah, the desktop. You're talking about the yeah, desktop. The desktop. Yeah. yeah, because I didn't yeah. have a laptop, you know. And then probably maybe about a year, almost a year after, I got a laptop. I remember the first picture I posted was a picture that Taylor had taken uh, had taken of me and I had just taken down my hair from braids and he just looked like a lion. And I posted the picture thinking, oh, that'll be fun. And Ridge, we're my good friend Ridge, he politely inboxed me and said, what are you doing? I don't even think it was inbox. He may have had to text me and say, friend, take that down. <laughs> <laughs> he was embarrassed for me. <laughs> But okay, so Nisha, what do you think you'll be doing at fifty? At fifty, um, I pray that I'm traveling more. Um, I love to explore and just try new things. And I think that's kind of what uh, you and Tasha was kind of alluding to, where our parents, you know, they pretty much were in a routine where we're more so we we have our routines, but we're also a little open to try new, new things and to be a little more adventurous and. Um, and so that's why I'm, I'm praying I'm able to do uh, once I, you know, climb those stairs and get closer to where you and Tasha are with, with the age. And you'll be 50 and how long? <clears throat> Several years from now. <laughs> <laughs> I like the way you handled that. So Several years from now. Several years for 50 days this year. That was my whole plan. Had all these trips planned. So I keep telling people, I look at the silver lining of COVID-19 and that's one of the silver linings is how much money I'm going to save just by sitting still, honestly. Yeah. Mm -hmm. What about you guys? Have you seen any silver linings from this? No? Yeah. <laughs> I'm by myself? Yeah. <clears throat> I'm by myself? No, I'm, yeah. I'm starting to see some silver lining uh, as I'm, I'm getting trying to get clarity okay. on some things and uh, just trying to continue to have an attitude of gratitude. Okay. And I'm finding when I, when I choose to find the silver lining or choose to find the positive in some things that could, you know, be perceived as negative, okay. I'm able to change my outlook and my perspective. And so, Having just a mindset of just saying, you know what, despite this is not favorable, I don't like the way it's happening, what are some good things that I can see beyond the situation? And and that's really giving me a different perspective and helping me to get some clarity on some things. I can appreciate that. The clarity is definitely there. Uh, <clears throat> one of the things is just realizing how tired I was. I did not realize that before we actually had to slow down. I've only been telling you for like, Why do I hear sarcasm? I mean, I've, I've only been telling you this for like over a year. So, you know, I'm glad that, you know, if that's what made you realize it. Then, yeah, that that's the silver lining. Definitely. But for me, actually, I mean, 
<clears throat> not much has changed for me, you know, mm -hmm. even during the shelter in place. So, you know, it's just kind of been life as usual for me. Mm -hmm. No, on the weekends you're still you you don't move around as much on the weekends. No, I, I no, I, but you know, I'm never I've never been a person that's just run the streets. So pretty much, we can't see. I'm sorry, we can't see. <laughs> Did you hear her tone change? When she what said, is stop? You know, I I haven't been able to go to the lake. You know, I do that mostly on the weekends. Yeah, that's, so, that's on the weekend mornings. But in the evenings, your timeline is birthday party over here, bowling alley over here, but, uh, girls night out over here. I mean, are I mean, you, you I'm, sure? I'm, I'm, oh, yeah. Let's do, do we need to do an audit on the timeline? I mean, because I, I just talking about me sasha but listen let's keep going let's keep moving so what listen what is your favorite girlfriend experience like if you just had to quickly say what was your favorite girlfriend experience because i'm really excited about the guests that we have coming on tonight what's your favorite girlfriend experience so my favorite girlfriend experience uh it's four of us um that our birthday is in october so uh -huh. We stair step each other. I have one friend that's a year older, then I'm next, and then I have a friend that's a year younger, and then the other one, she's you know the baby of the group. Okay. So we used to throw uh, parties together in October. Okay. So that was a highlight, and then we said, you know what? Let's try traveling for one year for our birthdays, and we went to Arizona, and okay. that was one of the best times of our lives. Um, and so <clears throat> we call it the October Birthday Club. And so we we had so much fun, um, and I, I just really would like for us to get back together and do that again because that was just different. That was just taking our birthday celebration to a whole nother level. That would be cool to have a group of women that you could travel with, like consistently. Like everybody knows, we're gonna save for this trip. Because Sasha, you guys used to do that quite a bit too. <laughs> yeah, we used to do that, and you know, because of course everyone knows that. Because your best friends are good friends with someone, they they don't always make good travel partners. Right. So right. once you find, you know, a good travel partner, you know, a partners, I think you should stick with it. You know, right. and and I'm I'm big on not letting people in because you know what would happen with us? People say, "Oh, next time I want to go," and we yeah. we all it was four of us, and we all say, "No, <laughs> <laughs> no, we're not going to add anyone." Because we we had never traveled with them, and you yeah. know, if you have that wrong person, it can make for an awful traveling experience. You know, it should be. It you should know. Be. So you know, that was definitely some of my best girlfriend experiences. And then simply just going out um, to dinner, going out to eat, and you know, having a few drinks. You know, because I, I have a couple of clicks, I guess, of, of friends. Right. So, you know, it, you know, so I have these friends over here that I kind of do this with and these friends over here. And so, you know, my drinking buddies, you mm -hmm. know, which I only drink sociably. But, you know, when we go out and and have a good time, I mean, that it's it, it is a definitely a good time. I'm like you. I have different cliques of friends. And that's probably mm -hmm. because I was an only child. And so I had to, you know, like if you hang out with this group of friends and they're not available that weekend, then I would want another group of friends. And it's not like anybody had more favor than the others. It's right. like, what do I get out of each set of friends? Like, you you know, you and I, Tasha, have been friends for, whew, yeah, 30 years or so. When I started having kids and stuff, it kind of dropped down. We kept in touch, but it, the contact mm -hmm. kind of dropped down. And then as they got older, but when I think of my favorite girlfriend experience, I don't, I, it would be so hard to choose one. Like, I just, Cause you get, I do definitely love the ones that I can laugh with. Like that oh, yeah. is one of my main things is that I have mm -hmm. to be able to laugh with you. And I am particular about who I travel with. Um, I would even rather have a girl's trip where everybody had their own room. And I would, I wouldn't even be upset about that. Honestly. Right. Right. Yeah. Right. I wouldn't be upset about that. Mm -hmm. I wouldn't either. I think too, to the point of having different sets of friends, uh, we have different seasons of our lives and we have, you know, different levels of maturity. So, of course, you're going to have different, you know, 
pockets of friends that you do certain things with right. versus, you know, um, right. other friends that you may not do with those set of friends, you do differently with another set of friends. So again, it goes with just a different season of your life and maturity levels. Uh, I still have some friends that are in my life that I've met in third grade mm -hmm. and that's still a part mm -hmm. of my life. And then I met some people, you know, in high school and college. And so um, now in my professional, I'm meeting new, uh, new groups of women. So I think it also speaks to whatever season you're in as well as your level of maturity. I agree. Did you ever watch uh, the show Girlfriends? I love yeah. that show. Yeah, you talking about with Tracy Ellis Ross? Yes. Yeah, I do. Yeah, I do. I do yeah. like it. That would have been fun just to kind of mature with a group of ladies, but getting married at 23 didn't allow for that. So that was it. That was a because, yeah, only one of them, uh, I guess, were married, you know, initially, and that was Maya. But yeah, I love that show. And that didn't work out. You saw how that worked out. Yeah, but they got back together, remember? It was, so, I know, but it was, you know, I mean, I'm looking at it from a different perspective, whatever. So, okay, so the reason I asked that is because the guest that we have on tonight is the leader of SWV, the lead singer of SWV. And so I just got too excited when we arranged for all of that. And one person that I do really well with traveling with is Angie. So her and I got to talking and I was like, you know what, let's just make this happen. And, and it did, and she did, and we made the phone call. And so Coco is gonna join us tonight. So uh -huh. it, it, yeah, I know, I'm so excited. Yeah. That's a good birthday present. So. Yes, it is. It is. And I guess, you know, she will be our first uh, celebrity. Celebrity. Yeah. It, no? Okay, yeah. Uh, that comes on the show, yeah, because last year at Essence Festival, I got to interview quite a bit of celebrities now, so. Okay, you know, <laughs> one of these days, <laughs> one of these days, we're going to get to bury that. But you're right, friend. I'm, I'm just going to keep saying that. We, we cannot can bury so those. Bury, right. you know, we can't do that because those you were so right. You did get to see, but you know, that wasn't on the show. You left Nisha and I in the dust going to Essence. <laughs> okay, but N Nisha and you chose not to go to Essence. <laughs> to so we're talking about this show, Goals Don't Have Feelings. Coco With is the three of our first that's exciting. celebrity. Yes, yeah. that's exciting. Yeah. Yeah, so. yeah. That's and good. Girl she can really sing. I yeah. know. I know. I love uh, uh, SWV. I love that group. I know. Yeah. I'm so excited. It, it is. But you know what? Okay. So, you know me, I have weird things that I get excited about. But one of the things that I'm really glad that she's willing to come on and talk about is actually about her mental health development and how she's handled it being diagnosed with bipolar disorder and being more vocal about it, talking about the book that she's writing. I could mm -hmm. not, I mean, it was just the perfect correlation, the perfect collaboration, if you will, for her to come on to the show where I consistently talk about the emotionality of success. And if more people like her, she has a following, she has people that admire her, like we love her voice and her songs. The catalog is amazing. Like for people to actually see her talking about that tonight, I think that's gonna be phenomenal. Yeah, yeah, that is. And that, you know, that just puts more, uh, takes away the stigma mm -hmm. uh, and it just allows people to be able to to have a face mm -hmm. uh, of mental health and be able to be a little more uh, secure in getting help. Yeah, just to say, if she's, go ahead, Tasha. I'll just say that I, I, I am kind of surprised that it's so many people, you know, mm -hmm. uh, are dealing with with some form of mental illness. Uh, before, I guess, because we didn't talk about it, then everyone thought that everyone was okay. Right. But, you know, especially now in the middle of this COVID-19 uh, crisis, we are finding that more and more people are not okay. And those people are now willing uh, to get some help. Yeah, that, that, that's the thing. Yeah. It was a lot of shame associated with, you know, talking about any issues or any problems. And of course, growing up, you know, you knew whatever happened in your house, stayed in your house. You didn't right. go and say, hey, I'm having some issues and I'm not, you know, feeling well. That was swept under the rug. So it right. was shame or guilt associated with that. And I right. think now that curtain of shame and that curtain of guilt is being uh, removed where people say, you know what, I'm tired of hiding in 
in in in silence or in secrecy, um, I, I need some help. It is. We are talking about it more. And, and you know what? I'm just going to shoot. I'm just going to give myself a shout out because the month of April was phenomenal. When Remember when I kept hashtagging zip code expansion a couple of years ago, Tasha, and you were asking me about that? So many phone calls came through in April where people, it, it was almost like since everybody sat down, the messages were getting through. The, the, mm -hmm. the commentary was getting through. And so I got highlighted on one uh, Instagram post uh, talking about me being America's number one success therapist because being you know a provider for over 20 years that I've earned my spot to say that I can be uh, uh, a uh, basically a soldier for the mental health field because I've done my time. I just love the way they you know labeled it or explained it or what have you and talking to a couple of other people, Coco coming on the show, you know, like all of these things started happening in April that when I laid my head down in January after setting my goals, I didn't even know any of this would happen. You right, know, right. so it, it does feel good. Like I'm almost giddy when I come on and I see Taraji P. Henson and D. Nice, you know, that week that they had a uh, fundraising, uh, what do you call it? Disc Jockey Live feed, you know, Instagram, Instagram Live. That's what it's called. But you know, stuff like that, well, nobody was talking about that 20 years ago. It was just like a, a long ship out here. Well, I mean, you know, yeah, because all of that internet stuff was just kind of 20 years ago was just kind of evolving or coming around. So well, I mean, if you don't remember back when okay, when the internet, I say Chris, you know, right. I remember Chance was a baby, yeah. And you got email addresses and constantly all you got all day was those chain letter or emails yeah. that and you don't no one does that anymore. I mean they haven't done that in years. But right. I remember that used we'll to be all you would get and you would just forward it. I yeah. mean you can email it's fifty people because they would just forward this this Damn. I can't remember what it was. It was like jokes and and different it things. Thing. It was anything, but now they just send it to your inbox. Right, right, because like now we have this social media that we didn't have then. But right. I remember, yeah, this email now, no one does that via email. I mean, now I scan my emails so quickly, you know, my personal emails, even at even at work, honey. I, okay, we ain't gonna get, yeah, I we're not read gonna, a lot of emails. <laughs> yeah, we're, we're not gonna get in a situation where we get written up. But okay, so let's get ready for Angie Ransom Jones, who is the author for Coco's new book that she is writing and releasing. We're, you know, looking forward to it, but um, it, it's just exciting. And so let's get ready for them to come on and then the three of us will come back and kind of give some highlights of the interview and, you know, some takeaways. So y'all hang out and we'll be right back. <laughs> All righty. So here we are on a wonderful evening, my 50th birthday. Can you believe this? And I have the opportunity to interview one of my favorite teenage stars. I know all of their songs by heart, but because God did not bless me with the gift of tune, I will not sing any lyrics, but thank you, Coco, for joining me tonight. Oh, thanks for having me and happy birthday. Thank you very much. And my good friend, Angie, who arranged for all of this to happen. I appreciate you so much. I think you get the prize for the best birthday gift. All right, <laughs> yay. <laughs> So we're here tonight because I highlight the emotionality of success. And I would like to tell the audience how much of a story, Coco, you have as it relates to the emotionality of success and your willingness to share it with us. So can you just give us a good idea of where you are in life and how you're joining us tonight, why Angie is on board and everything? Uh, well, right now I am home, as we all are, but uh, I know Angie because... Angie is helping me write my book. It's titled Beautifully Flawed. And it's just about, um, you know, a lot of people know of me. No, they think they know me. Uh, uh, yeah. Coco from SWV. But in my personal life, what they don't know is I told you. And the things I've been dealing with since since a kid. And, um, you know, I'm not ashamed to share it. And I think, you know, everybody can relate to what I've been going through, the things that I deal with on a daily basis. And I think I feel I feel like me writing this book will help a lot of people. That's excellent. That's excellent. And so that's why Angie is also um, um, with us tonight, because Angie, you have a special gift. Why don't you share what that gift is and 
How much is helping wow. other people? Sure, sure thing. So uh, my gift is helping others like Coco and, and others around the world to share their stories. I love to write. Mm -hmm. um, I'm a writer just by nature. I love bringing out testimonies from other people because I truly believe, and I say this all the time, but everybody has a story. Mm -hmm. And, you know, some people, that's why I really commend Coco because she's actually, she already has a platform of her own, but the fact that she is being so transparent to the world and willing to share something that's so personal. And I'm just honored, you know, to do it. It's funny because in January, I don't know if you remember this, Coco, at your concert, I met you in person at your concert. I think we talked on the phone once or twice. We have a mutual friend. So right. that's kind of how we became connected. So I met her at her concert, which was here in Dallas uh, back in January of 2019. And we met and she says, I'm going to be calling you soon because I'm going to be ready to do this book. And I was like, OK, girl, I was just so excited to be backstage. <laughs> and I think I saw Tony Braxton walk by and I was like, ah. <laughs> but she said that to me and she was really serious because I got a call probably a few months after that. And we just started back in January of this year. So, yeah. Yeah. Look at God. <laughs> That is, I mean, even thinking, I mean, like January 2019 is really not that far away, but considering what we're going through now, yes, it's like years right. ago, yeah, you know, like, can you imagine if we would have been here on the internet talking and really appreciating being able to stay at home? Like, nobody would have thought that, yeah, it's strange how things Very. are, yeah. So, Coco, will you share with us, too, like part of your journey with emotional wellness and why you want to tell this story? Will you share with the audience your goals for actually sharing the ups and downs that you've experienced? Um, it's just really simple. You probably hear my dogs barking. But. <laughs> They're so <laughs> 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 It's just really simple. I think, you know, growing up in the black community, we don't ever talk about therapy the things we're going through it's just pray about it uh -huh. and um the, the older i got i just began to deal with myself and the things that i was going through and i decided to seek help and get therapy and i just want everybody to know that it's okay you can go you can pray but you can get therapy too mm -hmm. and you, have, yeah. you know some of us need medication you need your medication it's okay to take your medication you know and um I was not I was not the one that you know felt like oh I'm crazy no if I need the help I'm going to get the help and guess what I'm still beautiful that's mm -hmm. just yeah mm -hmm. That's important what you said you can pray and get help too mm -hmm. that's important I keep telling people that it's not like there are two different things that you can't do simultaneously you just right. yeah you can chew and walk at the same time you can pray and get help at the same time yeah, and some people are just, they feel so ashamed, but it's nothing to be ashamed about. You're taking care of yourself. You're making sure that you're okay, and that's what matters. Right, right, right. So that's important that you're writing your book about uh, some of the parts about your life that a lot of people do not know. And, and why did you choose to share some of the emotional aspects of it, like your diagnosis and how you've handled it over the years? I just think it's very important just to share that part of myself with um, my fans. So many people think they know me, but you don't really know me. You don't know things mm -hmm. that I've been through. And I just wanted to share with everyone and just to let them get a glimpse of my life and the things that I ha I've had to deal with and to let them know that it, it is okay. You know, I'm not ashamed of it. You know, mm -hmm. I'm beautifully flawed. This is who I am. And there's so many people that deal with this on a day to day basis and don't know you know, they feel like, oh, my God, I can't let anybody know what I'm going through. But it's OK. It's all right. You can make yeah. it through just the same way I'm making it through right now. Uh huh. And, and part of it is education. And I think what you share in your voice, people will understand, oh, my gosh. OK, right. those, you know, those experiences that she's had, I've had some of the same ones. And maybe they'll go get help from that. Is that like part of your initiative in sharing the book? Like, do you think you'll talk to people about it and tour? Oh, yeah, absolutely. You know, um, therapy is great. And I think yes. all of us can do therapy. It's okay. We can pray, but therapy is just as good. Yeah, you know, that just warms my soul to hear somebody say therapy is great. <laughs> Doing this for so long, 
and trying to help people understand that even with high levels of success, that there's still some emotionality in it. And it's nothing to be ashamed about. Oh, absolutely. I feel like the higher I got, the more I started to deal with um, my emotions. It, it was just up and down. And at some point I knew that there was absolutely something wrong. Mm -hmm. You know, just, it just wasn't normal to me. So it took me a long, it took me, I was well into my forties when I did finally decide to seek help. And I'm glad because I'm a better person today because of me going to seek help. You know, I was wondering about that. Thank you for answering that because um, when we turn 40 as women, we do begin to, if, if we're being healthy and, and uh, honest with ourselves, we do begin to look and say, okay, what is going on with me? And when you got to that age bracket, you said, I'm going to go get some help. And I think if more of us went and did that, we have much more success later in life than we even had earlier in life. Yeah. You're absolutely right because, you know, we wait so long, but now we're here and I'm like, I, I feel so good right now. And I'm like, dang, I should have done this earlier. <laughs> <laughs> you know? Better late than never. Uh -huh. And so what are some things you would tell a young lady if she was experiencing the emotional dysregulation and friendship loss, difficulty with relationships? What advice would you give her? I would definitely tell her to go seek some help, mm -hmm. you know, because there's nothing wrong with it. Mm -hmm. You know, therapy. I love my therapist. <laughs> you know, I do too. And it's therapist. So much better. It will teach you how to just how to um, move forward in life. Mm -hmm. You know, you get the tools that you learn, and as long as you use the tools that are given to you, you will be fine. Right, right, and having that place to actually talk about what's actually going on with you. Like right. anytime I have a guest on, I just give them some words. And so mm -hmm. the first word is girlfriends. Like emotionally, how do you think you would have handled your friendships earlier in life? Had you had counseling then as opposed to how you handle your friendships now? Oh, well, my girlfriends, I, I think I've been a pretty good friend. I'm very territorial and I, that hasn't changed. <laughs> <laughs> But you know, I think I I'm, I'm, I've always been described as cold and hard. But mm -hmm. I, I think if I would have um, gotten a therapy earlier, I would have been able to express myself just a little bit more. But there's just a lot going on inside that I can't really explain and express to you at this moment. Now mm -hmm. it's totally different because I do explain and I do express. And then when I, if I do bust out crying, because back then I would never shed a tear. I didn't cry for years. I didn't think I had any tear ducts. Uh, but now I would bust out crying and they're like, <laughs> you all right? <laughs> We're not used to that. It's just me. It's just me. They're like, okay. You know, it's, it's, it's totally different, though. It is different. I'm a lot open now. <laughs> That's interesting, though. I mean, like you said, I didn't think I had any tear ducts. Because I know I was pretty crass, you know, in early adulthood because of some of the mm -hmm. experiences I had in childhood. And so by the time I got right. to school where I could make decisions for myself, it was like, no, you will not see me cry. You know, you will not see me buckle down. Yeah. I was like, crying is a sign of weakness. Nope, I'm not going to do it. But now, yeah. Because yeah. you see it as a strength. That's a tool that yeah. you have. And it feels good. <laughs> it feels good, too, at least for me. So, yeah. Yeah. And I think one thing I'll add is I think people are going to be pleasantly surprised when they read this book, because, you know, even just talking with some of Coco's closest friends and just hearing, I mean, my gosh, things, how they feel about her and what the media has said and what you saw on TV and all of that is so very different uh, in a lot of aspects to who she really is. And she and I, you know, have not even gotten to know each other better, uh, the best, but I feel like I know her, you know, through our conversations, but mainly through her friends and family who have spoken yeah. up, uh, you know, on her behalf. So I think people are gonna be very pleasantly surprised. Yeah. I think so, too. Yeah, yeah, so. yes. Uh, we definitely know people will be drawn to your story. And the fact that you're going to use that to educate them, I think that's just going to be the highlight for me. When I come see you, I'm just going to be like, yes, yes, yes. <laughs> <laughs> and so what about when I say creativity? How do you think 
emotional dysregulation of, uh, impacted your creativity, you, you know, in your 20s versus now? Uh, in my 20s, you, you, I'm all over the place. Um, but right now, I'm just, um, I'm more focused. Mm -hmm. um, I put my mind to something and I actually do it. In my okay. 20s, I'm just all over the place. I couldn't fall onto something else. Right now, I'm just, you know, more focused and I have a lot of thoughts on my mind, mm -hmm. but um, I take my time with them. You okay. know, I don't just jump from one thing to the other. You know, it's just, it's focused for me. And that was something that I was never good at. It's just really focusing on one thing. So being able to actually carry out the ideas that you have. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. 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 I can see that. I can see that. And in with the third word is maturity. Like, and you've already said that, that you, you really got to a point where you said, hey, something's not right. You know, and even with my group members, I've just, um, I've just learned to actually watch my words before I would, I would just say mm -hmm. anything. I wouldn't even think about it. Just yeah. that whatever was on my mind. But right now um, I'm a lot, a lot more respectful. And um, I just think before I speak, because it's not always about me and my feelings. I made you feel terrible. I have to accept that. And for me, I want to fix that. Yeah. With my, you know, my group members, we've been through so much. I just try to be a lot more respectful of who they are. And, you know, it's not just about me. It's about all of us. So I've learned right. to therapy and helping me see things. Um, I, it's really helped me become a better person. Yeah. You can see things in totality now, not just through your filter. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. so it, it makes me a happier person. Uh-huh. Yeah. It, uh, well, and you know what we're all seeking is peace. That's what we're all yes. seeking. Yes. And so it sounds like you're yes. at peace. I'm in a peaceful place right now. I am, am at peace. Yeah, that's that's good. And so after all of this coronavirus and stuff is up, do you have like a schedule for where you'll be next, or are you guys just kind of waiting it out? Well, all of our shows were canceled or postponed. So once this is over, we hope to pick back up and hit the road and get back out there. So okay. we're just okay. looking to see when this thing is going to be over. Yeah, everybody's kind of in a standstill. Yeah. So just are, are, you, are you okay? I know you have your dogs. But, I mean, they are so cute. <laughs> they have their own Instagram page. Yes, they do. They do. I, but I'm good. They're here. My mom lives with me and I have a 17 year old son that's here with me as well. So we're good. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Angie, what's next for you? Are you kind of waiting it out? Or are you busy? Yeah. Yeah. Waiting it out. I mean, even with this, we're all, everybody is just kind of on hold. So, you know, we'll continue to work. And then when, when the prime time hits where she can finish and release and, and go out on tour and, talk about her story all of that good stuff then that's when you'll hear from us again in the yeah. meantime we're going to be working 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 so right. yes <laughs> you ladies have a release date yet or it's like to be determined yeah to be okay. determined it was june because your birthday's in june right yeah my birthday yeah. is in june i don't even want to think about it <laughs> yeah yeah to, to, yeah tbd it will happen just when all this is said and done and we can all visit together and she can read from the book and all of that good stuff but yeah and it's funny because the week of the pandemic i think you were scheduled to come to dallas and we were all yes. excited oh good to see you down and then right. yeah the show got postponed because of all of this so one of those things yeah it is it's one of those things we just all have to take it in stride yes mm -hmm. yeah. Yeah. Well, what do you, you, want to do your birthday? you said what what are you going to do for your birthday um i'm gonna celebrate with you <laughs> 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 yeah, honestly, this uh, I was going to travel for 50 days turning 50. I wanted to travel for 50 days. So we were going to France. We were going to Florida, uh, you know, in October to Turks and Caicos. So all of these things were planned that have come to a screeching halt. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah so, wow. I, yeah, I'll turn 51 next year. Maybe I'll travel for 51 days next year. Right. I'm turning 50 in June. So I totally understand. My yeah. Yeah. 
It, but you know what? It, when I put it in perspective, I'm like, that's fine. I'm good. You know, everybody's right. safe. We're whole. We're not sick or anything. So right. right. Yeah, exactly. You know, if you right. had, this time last year, you're not going to be able to go anywhere. I would have been like, try me. But now, I'm just like, <laughs> yeah, it's, yeah. It's, it's something okay. about turning 50 because I'm telling you, it's a lot different on the other side. Once you turn 50, it's almost like a switch goes off and you're like, just unbothered. Who cares? Yeah. You do what you want to do and it feels great. Yeah. Yeah. So yeah. Yeah, it's just three fifty year old ladies. Look. <laughs> <laughs> so thank you for coming on. I appreciate you taking the time out of your day to celebrate with me. Thank you for having me. Yes, indeed. Angie, thank you for arranging everything. You are, you are welcome. It's Happy fiftieth. Yeah. One you'll never forget, that's for I sure. Will never <laughs> <laughs> wow. Talk about celebrating the whole month. <laughs> right. Right. Y'all enjoy the rest of your day. I appreciate okay. it. Okay. You too. Okay. Bye bye. Hey. Bye bye. <laughs> bye, -bye. <laughs> okay. All right. Following you all. She had flashbacks. Flashbacks. <laughs> But I said it was a little slow. It was a little slow. Do it again. <laughs> Put a little speed on it. Can y'all believe that just happened? Can you believe that we just had Coco on the show? I mean, how exciting is that? Man. That was my awesome. It is. It is awesome. So what did you think? What, what, what did you like that I asked her about? And what did you like? Stacia, you got to ask her this. What was going on? Okay, I just have to say this first right off the bat. Okay. That she could not have been your teenage, uh, <laughs> one of your teenage I know. singers that you really love. She's the same age as we are. I know. No, she's she's the, the same age girl. as you because I'm not 50 yet. So <laughs> I, when you said that, I thought. You know what? There was a fangirl moment. I totally got the timeline mixed up. I really did. But you, you're right. We were adults when it's She was nice was enough not to check you, boo. No, she didn't check me, but I bet I bet she thought it in her mind. So yeah. I can't yeah. apologize right now. But it, it was it was a fangirl moment. So there you go. Yeah. Yes. Caught but, up in the moment. Caught up in the moment. I, yeah, I was caught up in the moment. But, but you know, and I wish you would have asked her to sing. Like oh, oh, my favorite song, Weak. I, yeah, I ain't gonna sing it. You're right. Yeah. yeah. That is my favorite SWV song. Oh, and I heard it in the car. What's funny is, you know, I got out of the car yesterday, coming home, I got out, and that song was playing. Uh -huh. I got in the car and started it this morning to leave. That song was on. Oh, really? And I was like, man, I got out of the car on this song. And here it is again. And yeah, and I just sang. That's that was a jam. Uh, XM Satellite be listening to your conversations. He, they knew that uh, Coco was coming on the show. Nisha, <laughs> what did you think? I, I, I liked her transparency. I, I really liked her uh, being an advocate, too, for mental health um, and just stepping out on bold, being bold um, to say that she loved her therapist and that yeah. therapy is working for her. Yeah. Uh, I, I was like, yes, she's a champion and she's an advocate for mental health. So I, I, I support her 100% in um, speaking out boldly and being transparent about where she is and what she's been through in regards to uh, mental health. I, yeah, you know, I about came out of my skin when she said that. I was like, we all need to hear that. I love my therapist. Angie mm -hmm. was like, I love my therapist. Like, yes. that was just great. I mean, we, we couldn't have asked for a better sound bite than that, honestly. Right. Yeah. And I mean, and, and you can tell that she was genuine with it. Uh, I watched uh, SWV a few years ago. They had a reality show and I mm -hmm. watched that reality show. And so um, just in this short little clip of an interview, she does seem to be in such a better space mm -hmm. than what was shown. You know, I know they do edits and different things. They say right. that all the time in reality shows. But um, I still think that, edit or not, when someone is just not in a good space in life, it shows. Yeah, yeah. That's and, and I, that's why I was glad that she talked about. You know, everybody is entitled to their feelings, 
and we yeah. have to be respectful of it. Like I could appreciate what she was saying and I can appreciate that coming with maturity. You know, like I yeah. asked her, do you think, you know, at 40, you have a different perception of things that are going on? And she said she didn't realize that she had bipolar disorder until she was in her 40s. And yeah. if we would all sit back and really reflect Listen to what people are telling us. You know, like people would tell me, Stacey, you so crass and you don't say good morning, you know, all of these things. And I'd be like, okay, good morning. Where's my stuff? <laughs> you know, but I just had to listen to what people were saying and take that into account. And I'm like, you, Tasha, I think she's just in a much better headspace now than she was 10 years ago. and ready to talk about it and she has platforms mm -hmm. to be able to address it and talk about it mm -hmm. um, especially through her book um, so yeah. she can really be able just to to address you know some of the the secrecy uh or some of the things that she dealt with she can shed light on it um and I'm, i know that's going to be very pivotal in in the healing process yes and i'm excited I, you know when i'll get the book because i want to know I, you know i hope it tells in there like when she initially found out i mean or what you know if there was one incident that mm -hmm. happened that made her step back and say you know this you know whatever i guess the straw that broke the camel's back so right. to speak. Right. so I, I would love to know what it was what was the turning turning point for her yeah that's a good question that is so keep a lookout, guys, because this interview was something, but I do think that that platform that she has the capacity to build will be a lot. I think it'll help a lot of people. Like we we love her music and, and we like what uh, is evolving in terms of her mental health and her life. She seems more at peace. And then I following her on social media, she has the cutest dogs. But, uh, you know, it just seems like she's more at peace. And I'm glad that she shared some of her time with us this evening for what? My 50th birthday party. That's right. That's right. <laughs> and I also no, just love her. Uh, are you going to do something? <laughs> what were what you going to say, Nisha? I'll go back to Tasha. I, I would just say, I just love her relatability. Oh, you okay. know, and, and I, I just, I just love just how personable and you know willing she was to come on the show mm -hmm. and, and talk with you yeah. mm -hmm. so I, I like that aspect of 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 that interview it was great yeah so yes. talking to your question you know i had planned on traveling for 50 days so i'm gonna stay put uh interviewing some people that i have you know enjoyed listening to or watching over the years maybe um i don't know i mean i'm 50. i don't know i don't know what's you can going. go by curbside and pick up something i i'm okay with cooking my food here at the house like that doesn't bother me i i don't know because you know it's right. the birthday, because since it's your birthday you want to do something special so yeah. you know just go pick up a curbside uh what is a uh, chicken fingers you know, I'm not addicted to those anymore. Since yesterday? <laughs> um, actually, it's been longer than that. But so you stopped eating those at 49 and 49 Maybe. and 300. Oh, you're talking about Chick fil A. You're talking about Chick fil A. But no, I'm just talking about. about chicken. You like chicken fingers. Is I don't eat them like that anymore, friend. I don't eat but them like you just eat them from Chick fil A. Is that what you're saying? Well, we, yeah, if I go to Chick-fil-A, I'm going to get chicken tenders. But you know how I used to order them at every restaurant? And I knew what the quality of chicken fingers were at every restaurant? Yeah. I don't do that anymore. Oh. Mm -hmm. oh. oh, yeah, see there? Mm -hmm. So, do you have, do you, have you replaced it with something? Um, I do eat salmon a lot and mm -hmm. salads. But yeah, I don't, I don't have one food anymore that I just got to have every time I go out to eat. No, I guess, you know, when I was working on my health and running and, you know, really, you know, I mean, 50, you just can't eat what you used to eat. Like, and that's been mm -hmm. for me since I had the big H. So I just had to come to terms with some stuff. 50, you just can't do a lot of things. I mean, you know, I've been to do way more than what I can't do. I promise you that. Let this COVID-19 pull up. And I'm gonna be, I'm gonna be on some stuff. And not, you know what? Just because of what's been happening through through this, like I can already see things just lining up. So I'm good. If I have to travel 51 days in 2021, I'm good with it. It'll be 51 days instead of 50. 
But I mean, I, definitely, even without COVID, I mean, your body <clears throat> just. It just it's not the same. Yeah. It's, it's not uh, and it lets you know that you just cannot do the things that you, you know, used to could do. I mean, like three years ago, I've been walking now, probably about three years. I mean, I could go like I was doing like eight miles, you know. Yeah. And I can't do that anymore. It's too the recovery is too hard on me. I mean, I pro I can still do it, but the recovery, it just has me down, you know, too yeah. long. I think you need to talk to your trainer about that because in order for you to extend your uh, ability to do that, it is going to be about what you're eating during the day. And so yeah. if you don't eat enough food. We've already said that for years. You don't eat enough food. So you would have to eat something that's going to help you repair that muscle yeah. that's working when you're out. And what you, your, your nutrition, you know, and I don't want to say diet, but your nutritional plan it's at a deficit when you consider how many calories you burn when you go walk for free. Yeah, it, it, it definitely yeah. is. And, and and that goes against me, you know, it, of course, uh, losing, you know, because yeah. I don't yeah. I just don't eat enough. But, you know, at least mm -hmm. I do eat three meals a day now. I mean, for well, a long time, I, I did not. Yeah, that's you good. Know? So that's good because I, I eat way more than three <clears> meals a day now being on Corona. I'm, I'm going to have the COVID-19. That's, that's what I need to be working on this last week. The first time. week in, I, bought, I went and I bought all those, I bought snacks. I didn't buy them anymore. I did not. And no, then I'm I like, it yeah, yeah. Today, sure. I like, I might like Oreos today. Tomorrow, I don't want any more. But you know what I found is that I've even gone back to eating, I mean, cooking the foods that I cooked when these kids were little. Like, they grown mm -hmm. now. And so I, I pulled around and cooked a uh, pot of beans and weenies. Oh, wow. That's old school. Well, wait a minute. <laughs> Why did I eat the whole pot? <laughs> Nobody wanted it. I know. I said, who ate that? Yeah. I ate the beans and weenies. That was a, a, a flashback. And everybody was like, we don't want no shit. No. And I said, what is going on? So yeah, this is bringing out some very strange cravings, if you will, being at home all the time. But right. you know what? So yeah, I so have a question for you, birthday girl. Okay. <laughs> what? What? Since you know you've hit this milestone, uh huh. Uh, what would you say is your biggest accomplishment up until this point? Uh, professionally or personally? That's a good question. If you could do professional and personally. I think, you know, because 50, I mean, that's that's a huge milestone. And just to wrap it into just personal or professionally, um, you can even hit all four of your quadrants. Oh, OK. So let me go real fast. So personally, I would say with my relationships is creating a uh, atmosphere of peace with my family. Like that was really what I wanted growing up. Didn't have it growing up. So I was really mindful of the choices I made so that we could have a peaceful household. Like, I don't think anybody has argued during this coronavirus. Maybe me and Trent had a couple of things, but nothing major. Professionally, uh, just the continued growth that has been going on, I didn't really start kicking it into high gear until I started empty nesting. And everything is manifesting, it's coming up. The things that I've been working for is actually coming to uh, pass. And I'm happy about that. Spiritually, uh, it is a piece that I'm exactly where God wants me to be in terms of my life and how I live my life. Now, I do uh, want to study more. And um, yeah, I do want to get back to my you know, my old schedule of studying more. It shifted when we came out of leadership in that uh, small church that we were in. I think I was just so darn tired. I, I just, you know, oh my gosh. Like that was a lot of work. Hands, hands up and hats off to every first lady <laughs> from here. This side of the Mississippi to the other side of the Mississippi, because that's a lot of work being in leadership over a church. So spiritually, that's where I am. And then um, self-care. OK, so self-care, I'm definitely not as big as I could be. There you go. <laughs> <laughs> but it's good. I mean, like I said, you, you've you hit a, a great milestone uh -huh. and just to reflect over those those four areas of your life and what's most significant to you. Uh, uh -huh. Hopefully, we'll inspire someone who um, 
you know, maybe in their mid forties or cause some people don't like, you know, to get older or they don't like to talk about their birth birthdays or celebrate. But I think 50 is, is a beautiful milestone. Mm -hmm. um, and just to reflect over that and just to share uh, the, your takeaways, hopefully will be encouraging to someone else. I hope so. I guess the next milestone really was what, 70? Wow, 51. The way people dropping out now. True. I'm serious. Girl. Yeah, that's, that's just real talk. Every day. See, you know what? And that's the sad part about us getting older. And trying to start losing people. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I agree with you on that. But I'm yeah. doing this on a good note. We are celebrating 50, mm -hmm. and we are here. Like I said, with Angie and Coco, like it's 50 year old, three 50 year old women. We got two 50 in here. Well, excuse me, I'm the only 50 year old in this particular room. And you guys are almost there. Like, I think it's great. And I think it is an example of what life could be if you really focus on your goals. Like, thank you, Nisha, for bringing that up because um, there was, there was a changing point for me in my life when the kids started graduating to really sit down and isolate what do I want to do? And just start digging, 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 digging. So yeah, I'm content. I'm good. I don't feel bad about turning 50 in quarantine. Good. <laughs> I'm, good. Good. I'm good. That's good. Yeah. If we hadn't been in quarantine, I probably wouldn't have been able to have this uh, interview with Coco and y'all on with me tonight. We just would. You know what? I'd have been. I'd have canceled the show for myself. You know what? That's what I, I'd be like. Nope, don't show on my birthday. We're gonna be doing something. But here we are. Yeah. Here we go. So y'all take it easy. Enjoy the rest of your birthday. Thank you. Yes. Go turn up. For the shirt. Go turn up, turn up, turn up. <laughs> I, got, I got my hot tea waiting. Was the mailman just now passing. Uh-uh. Uh-uh. Bye. Bye.